So that leads us to the next question, is what does it mean to sequence a genome? Now, I just told you that a genome consists of maybe multiple chromosomes and some plasmids and, you know, lots of elements in the cell. But let's not rush there. Let's just assume we've got a simple bacteria. Here's our cell and our bacteria. This is our cell. And our bacteria has one chromosome. Here it is. We'll call it chromosome 1. And... That chromosome is, let's make it a million base pairs, 10 to the 6 base pairs long, okay? So what we mean when we talk about sequencing the genome is to identify the correct order of the A's and C's and G's and T's around that circle and to end up with a file, a sequence file, like a FASTA file that we've talked about, where we have those bases laid out from end to end. Now, obviously, this chromosome is a million bases, but our best sequencing technologies, we can get maybe killer bases, and the most common sequencing technologies, we can only sequence hundreds of bases. So how do we actually do that sequencing? We can't sequence all the way around a million bases and get back to the end. In the original days of DNA sequencing, one of the ideas was to take that circle of a million bases and to break that circle into defined fragments where you knew where each of the ends were and then to focus on each of those fragments and just sequence these fragments and then this fragment and then this fragment, and eventually you would get the whole thing and you could put it back together. That's a very slow process and reasonably inefficient process. And really one of the breakthroughs in DNA sequencing was to say, you know, this process isn't going to be very effective. We're not going to be able to do it at large scale. Why don't we just turn this from being a biological problem where we're trying to figure out where the adjacent fragments are to a computational problem. And so instead of taking that circle and trying to break it into um, pieces and focus on each piece, why don't we take that circle and we'll take lots of copies of the circle, we'll break those into very small pieces, let's say 100 base pairs long, maybe 500 base pairs long. And when we do that, we do it at random and we sequence all of those fragments. Because we've got lots of copies of the genome and we've got lots of little fragments, our goal now is to take those little fragments and convert them into one single long piece of DNA. Because we've got multiple copies of the genome, because each fragment starts at random, if we do this enough times, we should be able to put it all back together. So then the question becomes, how many copies do we need? Or alternatively, another way of phrasing that same question is, what coverage do we need? And what I mean by coverage is for each position along this sequence here, how many times do we need to see that to be sure that we've seen the whole genome? So one of the ways that you can do that is you can use the Poisson distribution which will tell you based on how many times you sample something and based on your expected overall size exactly how much coverage you think you should need. And if you estimate coverage with the Poisson distribution, you estimate that you need somewhere around 8 to 10x coverage of the genome uh, 
to assemble the whole thing. And in fact, from practical experience, what we typically aim for now is not 8 to 10x, but 10 to more like 100x coverage of the genome. The top end here, the 100x coverage, is not really driven anymore by our estimates from the Poisson distribution. We don't worry about that. Our top end is actually driven by um, the amount of sequencing that we can get off of one of the machines. In fact, as you change from maybe Illumina to, let's say, Nanopore or PacBio sequencing, both of which have longer reads, then, in fact, we don't need so much coverage anymore. We don't need 100x coverage. But for most bacterial genome projects, we're looking at being around 10x on the low side, 100x on the high side. In that kind of ballpark, sequence coverage will allow us to get a complete circle that represents the genome. Now remember, the amount of sequencing that we have to do is dependent on the size of the genome. If we have a longer genome, to get the same amount of coverage, we need to do more sequencing than if we have a shorter genome. And so the idea about coverage is that it's independent of genome size, but it allows you, given a particular genome size, to estimate how much sequencing you would have to do.